Let me just uh, start by saying that uh, Luna County and this whole part of the state is extremely fortunate to have uh, John Arthur and, uh, working in the Senate. Uh, there's no question about that. The same thing with Donna in the House. Uh, you have the first the first team out up there representing you in Santa Fe, and uh, they've done so for a long time, and you're, you're very fortunate in that regard. And I, I've had the good fortune to work with them on a lot of things that matter in this part of the state, and uh, uh, maybe find some occasions to do so in the future. Um, I was going to talk about two or three issues here. I first uh, want to thank you for inviting me to your annual luncheon. It's great to be here. And uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you for, uh, for your kind words earlier. Um, uh, Melody thought I ought to talk about three issues, and let me do that. One is this uh, border crossing card zone expansion, which I hope you're all aware of. And it's something we've been working on now for a couple of years, and it's finally come about. Uh, the head of my legislative operation in Washington, Sunale Stewart, he's a, a lawyer who's looking forward to moving back from Washington to practice in Santa Fe. Uh, at the end of the year, but uh, Sunale has been bird dogging this uh, constantly with the uh, Department of Homeland Security, and they finally, of course, have issued a proposed rule uh, where they are suggesting that they will allow the, this border crossing zone, border crossing card zone, to be extended up to 55 miles from the border here in New Mexico. As you may know, in 1999 it was extended to 75 miles in Arizona. And uh, so the people who are pre-cleared and have these border crossing cards could come into Arizona and could shop or do business uh, within 75 miles of the border without paying additional fees, without providing additional documentation. In New Mexico, it's been at 25 miles. It still is at 25 miles. And that means that people could not come to Deming, could not come to Lordsburg, could not come to Las Cruces. Uh, Mexican nationals could not without paying an additional $6 fee per person, without uh, uh, providing additional documentation. So what this will provide is that uh, folks can come to all of our communities in New Mexico along the border, uh, including Deming, and that will be a good thing. I believe we've, we've had an, one of the economists there at New Mexico State, uh, uh, Dr. Peach, uh, did an analysis and he estimated that he thinks there will be about $51 million a year of additional business activity that will occur either by people coming over to do business or people coming over to uh, be tourists. One way or another, uh, that should be a good thing. There's no reason why if you come over in Arizona and you're perfectly legal getting up on I-10, I uh, you should become illegal as soon as you cross the border into New Mexico. And so that's what we're fixing with this uh, issue. So there is time for anyone to comment. Any of you who haven't uh, commented uh, uh, to Homeland Security about this, uh, please do so, and, and particularly those who who think it's a good idea, because uh, I think comments to the effect that this would be a good thing uh, would uh, uh, would be welcome. And I think there's there's 30 days of, of comment period, and some of that's gone by, but not a lot of it as yet. Uh, I wanted to also compliment you, uh, compliment both the city here, uh, but also the county and various uh, organizations here in the county on the all of the work that's gone on related to energy. As some of you may know, I chair the Energy and Natural Resources Committee in the Senate. We've spent a lot of time on trying to encourage more attention to use of clean energy, renewable energy, more attention to energy efficiency. And when I look at around, I know there's been a task force, a Southwest New Mexico energy task force that uh, Melanie and Dara in, in our offices have worked hard with. Uh, and, and I think Luna County probably stands out as the county in this part of the state, maybe the entire state, that has done the most to try to promote uh, clean energy related projects and energy efficiency. And that's true with uh, Macho Springs uh, development. Uh, uh, I gather it's uh, true with the school system here. I know there's, I, I visited one of the middle schools that, that has a very 
impressive uh, geothermal operation, which uh, uh, saves a lot of energy and a lot of uh, utility bills. Uh, I know Sapphire is here, and Sapphire is represented, and down, and of course, down in Columbus, uh, they're they're moving ahead, and that's very encouraging. Uh, but I, I wanted to commend everybody uh, uh, for your initiative and your uh, commitment on that on that score. The final thought thing I thought I'd just say a few words about, <clears throat> since you're all perhaps interested in uh, how fouled up things are in Washington, I thought I'd give you a sense of that. <laughs> Uh, uh, we are, of course, approaching an election, and not a lot is likely to be done of a constructive nature between now and the election, I mean legislatively, so I think everyone probably assumed that, but uh, we will go back into session the week after Labor Day, after the Republicans have their convention, after the Democrats have their convention, Congress reconvenes for about four weeks, but I am... Uh, doubtful that we will get anything very constructive done. I hope we're do able to do a few things. I hope we will we'll see uh, an ag bill passed. Uh, we passed a reasonably good uh, uh, ag bill out of the Senate and sent it to the House and uh, they were not able to get the votes to pass it but we hope that when they go back into session after Labor Day they will be persuaded that this is something they ought to go ahead and pass. And, and if they have some disagreements with us, pass their version and let us have a conference and, and settle on what, uh, what the agricultural program ought to be for the country. But with the drought that a lot of farmers and ranchers around the country are faced with, it's important that we get that assistance uh, to uh, the agricultural community and I hope we're able to pass an ag bill. Other than that, I'm not too sure. We're gonna pass, I believe, a six month so-called continuing resolution, which basically means that we're not able to get agreement on a new budget or a new level of appropriation for the, uh, the upcoming fiscal year, but we can agree to keep the 2012 level in place for another six months. And so we, we will likely pass that, and, and that will carry us from the 1st of October until uh, the 1st of April. And, and that will take some of the uncertainty away. Unfortunately, there's a lot of uncertainty that will not go away. The uncertainty about the so-called fiscal cliff. I don't know how many of you have really focused on that problem, but the problem is that many of the taxes that we pay today are scheduled to uh, go up. Uh, we are essentially the tax cuts that were adopted when President Bush was in office are expiring at the end of the year, and so we revert to the tax provisions, the tax rates that were in place in the 1990s. Uh, that would mean a tax increase for just about everyone. Uh, we're trying to head that off. We're trying to get agreement to, to head it off, but uh, I doubt that that'll happen before the election. It'll have to happen in a so-called lame duck session between the election and the end of this Congress, the end of the year. The other thing is the so-called sequester, and this is a set of spending cuts both defense-related spending cuts and other spending cuts that will also occur on the 1st of January unless Congress can agree to something to head that off. Uh, th these are not going to occur immediately at that time, but the, the lower level of spending would begin uh, at that level in a lot of federal programs, defense and non-defense both. Uh, I could go into great detail about how we got in the mess of having all of this stuff expire at the end of the year, uh, but I'm sure that uh, that's more detailed than most of you have an interest in hearing. But I uh, appreciate the chance to speak to you. I appreciate the kind words that uh, John Arthur and Donna uh, said, and, and the mayor, and I, I, uh, uh, I think uh, this part of the state is still my my home, uh, and I look, look on it that way and plan to be here a great deal, particularly now that we're coming back to New Mexico. So thank you very, very much. Appreciate it.